everybody, it's Professor Finley. And for today's Pilates session, what I'm going to do for you guys is review all of the classic or standard Pilates exercises that we've learned this semester. Um, my intent is for, to almost give you guys uh, a checklist or a review list of exercises that you could pull together, right? to form your own practice. And I am going to be posting everything that we're doing in today's session uh, online for you guys. So you have sort of a visual and also your video checklist. Uh, we will be going through the exercises relatively quickly because as you know, we've done a lot of exercises this semester. We have a lot to fit in. So today may not feel like a standard Pilates workout because it won't be. You would never do this many exercises in a Pilates, standard Pilates workout, right? This is just a smattering of a lot of things. I may not and I will not be able to give you every modification that we've done throughout the semester, but when I give you your um, online kind of written checklist, I will include all of those modifications. All right? Okay, so I'm going to start with our usual body scan, breathing, and upper body mobilization. You don't always have to do this in a Pilates session. The reason I give this to you guys every, every session is I believe that it's important. We come in from a lot of distractions, even now, even now in our current situation, you know, mental distractions, other classes that you guys are dealing with, listening to way too much news, <laughs> listening to way too much online content right now. So there has to be a way to kind of draw ourselves into our bodies. I'm also a big believer, even more now than ever before, in breath work, and I think that's so important. So if you guys can just find your own version of what I give you guys every session, right? I call it the kind of pre-warm-up part of our class. That would be great. Okay, as usual, I'm sitting on my yoga mat and I'm sitting on my resistance or flex band, right? I'm in my comfortable neutral position, right on top of my sits bones with my spine in a nice neutral lengthened position. Arms are nice and heavy. Let's all close our eyes and do just what I said. We're gonna tune out the outside world, really try to bring our attention deep within. We're gonna start with a little body scan. So I'm gonna have everybody bring your attention up to the crown of the head, noticing any stuck stress, any tension, or any gripping. And when we notice those things, we're just gonna let those muscles release and relax. Coming around now to the muscles of the face, the forehead, the muscles around the eyes, the cheeks, and the jaw. Once again, noticing and detecting tension, gripping, any feelings of anxiety or stress and just releasing and letting all of that go. Bringing your awareness now around to the back of your head and those little tiny muscles right at the base of your skull. Those areas can carry a lot of tension. Just notice what you're feeling and really try to let those muscles and any tension that you're noticing just dissolve and relax. Let's bring our attention now to the muscles of our neck noticing and detecting any neck strain, any gripping of those muscles, any sensation that the head is shifted to the right, to the left, forward or back. And whatever you're noticing, let those muscles soften and relax. It helps to take a tiny little head roll to further release those muscles. Go ahead and do so. Let's bring our awareness now to the muscles right at the base of the neck and all of those little muscles that surround our shoulder girdle another big area to carry tension and stress. Just let those muscles drop and release. If it helps to take a little shoulder roll, go ahead and do so. Bring your awareness now to all of those little muscles that run along your spine, all the way from the back of your neck, down through your shoulder blades, your mid back, your lower back, and the muscles behind your hips. Noticing and detention, detecting any of those gripping or tight or tense muscles and then releasing and letting them go. Bringing your attention now around to the front of your body, the muscles of your chest and your abdomen, all right? If you're noticing a gripping sensation, a forward sensation in those shoulders, go ahead and roll them back and down and let the muscles of the chest open and relax. Make sure the belly muscles are not carrying any tension at this moment. 
Bring your awareness now to the muscles of your hips. So we're talking about the hip flexor muscles right in front of the hips, and we're talking about the gluteal muscles right behind. If you feel like you're clenching those muscles, go ahead and let them soften and release, and perhaps bring yourself into a little bit more comfortable sitting position when you do so. Make sure your arms are resting nice and heavy, right down by your sides, no gripping in those fingers. Let's all bring our attention now to our base of support. I want everybody to really get the sensation that the weight of their bodies are sinking down into the floor and that the floor is really supporting the weight of your body. So just take a nice silent moment just to really appreciate being very physically and mentally present in your body and in your space. Now we're going to take a moment just to focus on our natural breath pattern. Just see where your breath is going today. If you're able to breathe into the lungs or if you have a more shallow or restricted breath pattern. And now we move right into our breath work. So we're going to start with that nice deep breath in through the nose. And all we're going to think about for this first one is just pressing that air down as deep into the base of our lungs as we possibly can. And we're going to hold it at the top for five, four, three, two, one. And then completely exhale that breath through your mouth, releasing all of the air out of your lungs. Inhaling once again, going into our more diaphragmatic belly breath this time. Really fill up the lungs with air. Really feel the air extend out through your belly. And then shh, through your teeth as you deflate your belly and feel the abdominal wall press back towards your spine. Keep the abdominal wall flat now. Take another inhale breath, and this time I want you to send the air into the sides and back of the rib cage, really feeling a stretch through those little intracostal muscles. And then out through your imaginary straw, starting to activate the transversus abdominis, getting that nice narrowing sensation through the waist from all sides, from all angles. Once again, a nice big lateral inhale breath. See if you can go just a little bit bigger this time. Out through those pursed lips to activate the transversus abdominis. And now that slight lift through the pelvic floor as you feel your tailbone, your sits bones, your, and your pubic bone gently draw inwards and slightly upwards. Moving on, starting with a nice lateral inhale breath. As you exhale this time, gently nod your chin towards your collarbone and round the back of your head, your cervical spine, and your upper thoracic spine over your leg position. Next inhale breath, I want you to think about really breathing into the upper back, getting that nice stretch from shoulder blade to shoulder blade. Exhale once again through that imaginary straw and feel the strength of those deep core stabilizers gently contracting. In this position, one more inhale breath, a little bit bigger this time, really open up the upper back. And then exhale, starting that fine spinal articulation as you roll and stack one vertebrae at a time, all the way up that imaginary wall until you're sitting just a little bit taller, a little bit straighter than you were when you started. Open your eyes, take an inhale of breath, and gently take your head over to the right. As you exhale, you're rotating the cervical spine and the head all the way around. We're gonna add the shoulders this time. Inhale, exhale, shoulders, neck, and head. We're adding the entire thoracic spine and the rib cage this time as we circle from the waist. And we're gonna take that one more time, keep that breath pattern going as we inhale. And we exhale. Flex the spine all the way forward, roll and stack to the top. Other side, inhale, head over to the left. Slow exhale breath. Remember, we're easing through those tense spots, adding shoulders, neck, and head. We're not trying to force anything. This is just very easy movement, releasing tension, adding the ribcage and the thoracic spine, 
feeling that nice stretch through the rib cage, through the spinal muscles and through the obliques. Let's take the rib cage around one more time. And then flex the spine forward and roll and stack to the top. Take an inhale breath. We'll begin to work through the shoulder girdle, reaching the uh, shoulders up towards the earlobes. And then we exhale to roll them back and down and forward. And again, up and back and down and forward. Let's go in the opposite direction now. We draw them up and forward and down and back. And once again, up and forward and down and back. We're going to take the scapula into a little bit of upward downward rotation. Remember, you don't want a lot of tension on the band at this point. Take your inhale breath to prepare. As you exhale, stretch and reach those arms up. As you inhale, feel the elbows come towards each other right behind your back. And again, exhaling and inhaling just a couple more guys i just want you to remember with this exercise really try to have it be about the shoulder girdle really try not to involve the rib cage and again reaching and pressing those elbow points together excellent guys come off your band like i said just a few reps of everything today take the band wrap it around the bottom third of your rib cage Cross the ends, make sure you're holding the ends of the band out of the index finger, thumb side of your fists. Inhale, exhale, we're gonna go into external rotation of the humerus in the shoulder girdle, and then release. And two, and again, we're really trying to make this about the humerus, externally rotating the shoulder girdle. I'm really not involving my clavicle, my collarbones, or my rib cage at all. Just kind of nice isolated movement really strengthening the postural muscles of the upper back and stretching and opening the chest. And we'll take just two more today. Two. And last one. Good, guys. Uncross the ends of the band as we take the spine into flexion and extension. Inhale, breath. Exhale, breath. Flex the thoracic spine, cervical spine, and head forward as you pull the band towards the front of your body. And then inhale as you really open those arms and let the band release and open behind you. And then we go back into flexion and we stack our spines to neutral. It's an exhale breath for this one. An inhale breath as we go into thoracic extension. An exhale breath as we pull back into flexion. Inhale to come back to neutral and reaching really let those arms extend behind you as you open up the chest and then forward and up as always keep the breathing going good as you reach into extension make sure you're supporting the back of the head and the neck and forward and up good guys okay let's bring that band around to the front of the body now and we're holding the ends out of the pinky finger side of the fist. Remember, again, not too much tension as we go into lateral flexion of the spine. Let's start with an inhale breath, very deep. Exhale, pulling the right fist towards the mat and really extending the left fist upwards. And then release. And exhale, opposite side. Okay, I'm just letting that band pass right in front of my forehead. Good. Remember that reaching up with the fist is just as important as pulling down. That's really gonna get us that stretch across the intercostals. Let's pull the band slightly behind the head. We've done that a couple of times. And behind the head, this really opens up the chest and really gets us to think about stabilizing the rib cage, which has been a really important part of this course. Excellent, guys. Go ahead and just really Feel the strength of the upper back as you kind of pull the elbows apart from each other. You're pulling the fists apart, but you're really thinking about the strength through the elbow points here. And we'll just take two more. And this is going to be our last one today. Good, guys. Bring the arm forward. It's just, my fists are just slightly lower than my chest. We're going to go into spinal rotation, starting to wake up and activate the obliques. Let's inhale and exhale. Pull that right fist behind you. Rotate the spine and send your left fist as far forward as you can. And release. Opposite direction, two. 
Really feel the pull through the chest and upper back. Feel the rotation of the spine. Yes, it is okay if your hips move slightly in this one. Good, one more in each direction. And last one, and just a little bit more of upper body, guys. Pull those elbows apart once again. As you pull the elbows apart, try not to let the rib cage flare or splay. All right, get that sense of connection. And just one more. Excellent, everybody. Okay, we're gonna continue on. So that's the pre-warm-up. Let's go into our supine warm-up. Remember supine to be lying on our backs, all right? So Pilates stance, just a quick review. My legs and feet are sit bone distance apart, which is slightly narrower than your hips. My kneecaps are pointed straight up and my toes are straight forward. As I'm working in this position, I'm really trying not to let the knees fall open or collapse towards each other. I'm on my sit bones once again, right? My spine is lengthened in that beautiful neutral position and I have one hand behind each thigh. I take an inhale breath. As I exhale, remember when we roll down, we always start with that spinning, right, effect of the pelvis. So my pelvis spins back, I create that lumbar flexion, and that enables me to roll one vertebrae at a time, walking my hands along the back of my thigh, passing through my imprint, and rolling my thoracic spine one vertebrae at a time, cervical spine, and finally the back of my head rests. We walk our heels in to recreate our Pilates stance, and arms down by the sides, palms facing down. Very quick body scan now to make sure we're truly in neutral before we continue our supine warm up. So I've got that sense of heaviness and connection through the back of my head, right behind the bridge of my nose. I scan down to the back of my neck and make sure I'm feeling just a little bit of cervical extension. I scan down to my thoracic spine and the back of my rib cage and really make sure that I'm feeling that sense of connection and heaviness, very important part of the body. Scan down to the lumbar spine, make sure I'm feeling that little bit of extension right underneath the belly button. You really want it to be right underneath the belly button. Scan down the back of the pelvis, sacrum heavy, coccyx heavy, ASIS and pubic bone forming that horizontal plane. Arms are heavy down by my sides. Collarbones, shoulders, and upper back are very open and wide. Rib cage is soft and heavy. All right, and we're ready to go on. Take a big inhale, breath through the nose. Exhale through that imaginary straw and activate the transversus abdominis pelvic floor. We're gonna go into rib cage stabilization. Inhale, breath, float the fingertips up towards the ceiling. Exhale, breath, the thoracic spine stays heavy. We extend those arms up over our head towards the wall behind us. Inhale, up. Exhale, float down. One more time like that, guys. Inhaling and exhaling. Inhaling and exhaling. Let's grab our flex band. You don't need to use a flex band for arm scissors, but I find it to be an amazing modification for this one, so we'll go ahead and do that today. My band is slightly wider than my shoulders and wider than my mat. Inhale, breath. Exhale, breath, as we pull that band right across, diagonally right across the body, send the right fist up over your head towards the back wall, pull your left fist down by your hip, and up and two, so this band is making it much more challenging for me to maintain thoracic stability. I'm having to use that exhale breath to activate and reach those deep core stabilizers so that my body doesn't start to rotate or go into a little bit of lateral flexion or that I start to lift my thoracic spine off of my mat. That heaviness through the rib cage, very important. We're only gonna do one more rep each side. Right arm pulling, left arm lowering. And one more, okay. Another one we've done this uh, semester. Exhale to pull the band apart. And it's just right slightly below my chest, below my shoulders as I pull. Making sure once again that the front of the rib cage does not flare open. We talked about that image of keeping the barn doors gently closed and we'll do one more. Go out, we're just gonna bring the band down, let it rest across our laps, bring our arms back down, palms facing down. Okay, we're gonna go into a little bit of our tabletop work. Take your inhale breath. 
As you exhale through your imaginary straw, really recruit transversus abdominis and pelvic floor in your neutral spine position. Once again with a small change, big lateral inhale breath. As you exhale this time, I want you to contract your entire set of abdominal muscles and press into imprint. Inhale, you're really feeling the lumbar vertebrae connect to your mat. Exhale, float back to your neutral spine position. Adding on once again, inhale. Exhale, contracting the abdominal muscles, pressing into imprint, squeezing the glutes. Inhaling to peel the right foot, heel ball toe, up to tabletop. Exhale, stay in imprint, peel the left foot, heel ball toe, up to tabletop. Take an inhale breath. As you exhale, tap that right toe right towards your mat, and then inhale, come up. Exhale, left. So these, this exercise is called toe taps because we're tapping our toes. A couple of things that we want to make sure is that we're maintaining imprint and we're maintaining a 90 degree bend right to the knee. So it's not me kind of closing that 90 degree angle at my knees. It's me actually lowering my femur, right? To lower that leg each time. One more rep each side. We could also take this into the dead bug exercise, right? Or add arms, okay? So now I want you to put a $100 bill between your knees, ankles, and big toes. Hold on tight. Sweep those arms out to the side, palms facing down. Feel the strength of your upper back and your shoulders as we go into spine twist supine. With an inhale breath, rotate from your waist, send your knees over to the right to the two o'clock mark on your imaginary clock. And as you do that, I want you to press down through the back of the left shoulder. And then exhale, those knees come straight back up. Inhale, now the knees go over to the left and I'm pressing down through the back of my right shoulder. And as I come up, I find imprint. And then again to the right, find imprint as you come up. And again to the left, finding imprint. Go a little bit deeper this time if you can, over to the right and up. Feel the backs of the shoulders press down and over to the left and up. Let's sweep our arms back down by our sides. Take an inhale breath as we lower that right foot toe ball heel. Exhale, left foot toe ball heel. I return my legs and feet to Pilates stance, sit bone distance apart, and I return my spine to neutral as we go into pelvic curl. Next exercise. We've done a lot of modifications with this one, right? But we're only gonna choose just a couple today. Take your inhale breath to prepare. As you exhale, contract your abdominal muscles, press into imprint, and then very important for this one, main important part, squeeze your glutes. Roll up to your bridge position. In our bridge position, we're thinking hips high, ribs calm, and that long diagonal line from shoulders to kneecaps. Hold, and then exhale, we articulate the spine one vertebrae at a time, passing through imprint and returning to neutral. A couple more like that, inhale. Exhale, think abdominals, glutes, roll up, those hamstrings kick in. We inhale at the top, reaching the knees away from the shoulders. Exhale, roll back down, one more just like that, inhaling. Exhaling the sequencing to me, and this one is really important. Roll up, take your nice inhale breath at the top. Exhale, roll back down. One main modification that we've added to this exercise are our marches. We're gonna do a couple now. Inhale, exhale, abdominals, glutes, hamstrings. Let's roll up at the top. Take an inhale breath to prepare at the top and then exhale, I'm pushing down through the left foot as I release the right leg to tabletop and return. And left, return. And the lifting will occur with the exhale breath and returning with the inhale. Good, no shifting in the torso. Don't let those hips drop. No rotation in the torso, very still. And left, one more rep each side, and right, and left. Let's inhale at the top and really feel the clarity of that bridge position. Glutes firing, hamstrings firing, and then exhale, roll back down and return to neutral. Going into our chest lift work next. Chest lift, low curl. 
To start this, I always start with a couple of these chin nods so that I really get my neck muscles firing correctly, okay? We don't wanna cause unnecessary neck strain. We wanna build strength in our necks. So to do that, we take our inhale breath, gently lower our chin towards our collarbones and take our eye gaze down towards our belly buttons. And then I bring my cervical spine back to neutral and stare straight up. Inhale, nod the chin to create that cranial cervical flexion. And then exhale, return to neutral. Inhale, nod the chin. Exhale, return to neutral. We're gonna come up into a chest lift low curl this time. Inhale, nod the chin. Exhale, curl up. I'm still in neutral. My shoulder blades are lifted off my mat. My arms are hovering and my fingers are reaching. And then roll back down sequentially. Couple more like that. Nod your chin, lower your eyes. Roll up. Try to come up a little bit higher, but don't lose your neutral. And then roll back down. And again, nod your chin. Roll up. Take a nice inhale breath. Exhale, roll back down. Let's make our small change this time. Inhale, nod the chin. Exhale, roll up. Inhale to sweep the arms, fingertips right behind the head and roll back down. So remember my fingertips are not interlacing or overlapping, they're kind of side by side. And we do that little what I call elbow check. I can see my elbow points right out of the corners of my eyes, but it doesn't look like I'm hugging my head. All right, we're gonna take a few consecutively, a little bit faster, but we're not gonna use that beautiful sense of sequencing that we just worked on. We'll take an inhale breath to prepare. Exhale, nod our chins and roll up. Inhale, roll back. Remember the chin nod and the lowering of the eyes each time. And really remember to stay in neutral spine position so you've got that small gap underneath your lumbar spine. Don't forget about your sequencing. Let's take four more and three more and two more and one more. Now we're gonna add some rotation, which is a modification we added this semester. So as we roll up, we're gonna send the sternum towards the right femur and then roll back, and then towards the left. So this is chest lift with rotation. And right, and left, and right, and left. One more to the right. As we lower this form to the left, I'm gonna have you bring your leg up to tabletop, and we're just gonna curl straight up and release. This is another modification that we've worked on this semester, just a few of these. Good, and two more. And as we lower this fifth one, I'm gonna have you extend that right leg and then draw to tabletop as you curl. And two, and three, and four. We're gonna hold this fifth one up and we're gonna add five pulses. Take an inhale breath and pulse for five, four, three, two, one. Inhale at the top. As you exhale and roll down, Lower that right foot, peel up the left foot, and here we go. One, and two, keep the sequencing going. Three, don't forget your chin nod, and four. As we lower this fifth one, extend that left leg, and then draw it to tabletop as you curl. And two, and three, and four. Let's stay on this fifth one, take an inhale breath, and we pulse for just today, five, four, three, two, one. Inhale at the top, exhale, lower the upper body, lower that left foot. Let's take the fingers from behind the head, lengthen them down by our sides. Take an inhale breath. <sighs> exhale, good guys. Roll towards your screen. Obviously, we've done many more modifications to that exercise throughout the semester. And again, I will put that in your written checklist, all right? This is just a review today. Okay, so now we're gonna, that was our supine warm-up. Now we're gonna go into our prone warm-up. So the one we always start with for this one is back extension prone. Okay, we're just gonna do a few in the two positions that we mainly worked on. Okay, then we're gonna go into hover spine, which is another great set of exercises, right? We've done all sorts of arm modifications, which I'll, which I'll put in your written checklist. We're only gonna do one of them today. And then we're gonna go into heel squeeze. Mm, great gluteal exercise, great posterior chain exercise. And then we're gonna go into leg lift prone. All 
All right, so those are all of the prone uh, back extension warm up exercises we've done this semester. All right, back extension prone to start, arms in the goal post position. Make sure your fingertips are really not any higher than the crown of your head. All right, elbows are out to the side, legs are long and lengthened. You're feeling a little bit of activity in the glutes and hamstrings. You're really feeling quite a bit of activity in your abdominal muscles. This is our co-contraction. Forehead down on your mat. Take your inhale breath. As you exhale, increase the downward pressure through your palms and forearms, lengthen your body, and start to articulate up. We use kind of forehead, nose, mouth, chin, throat, collarbones, and chest. Inhale at the top, exhale to articulate back down until your forehead meets your mat. Inhale, exhale, feeling that downward pressure through the palms and arms, lengthening and peeling up into thoracic extension. Inhale, we always make sure we're not overly extending the cervical spine. Exhale, roll back down, a couple more, inhaling, exhaling, lengthening to press up. Inhale, really feel like you're opening up the chest, opening up the sternum and collarbones. Exhale to roll back down. One more, just like that, guys. Inhale, exhale, really feel the length of the body. We also use that image of an imaginary marble that you're pushing with your nose right across the floor. Inhale at the top, exhale to peel back down. Extend your arms. This is another modification to this exercise we've worked on this semester. Right, my arms are lengthened down by my sides, palms are facing in, and my shoulders are lifted up off my mat. So I've got a little bit of scapular retraction, right, in the upper back. Take your inhale breath, and this time lengthen and go up with that inhale breath. And then exhale, articulate back down. So we're gonna take an inhale now on the up, and an exhale on the way down. Inhale up, exhale down. One more, inhale up, exhale down. We've added rotation to this exercise. Let's go ahead and rotate away from our screens and then come back to center as we roll down. And then towards our screens. So chest, uh, sorry, uh, back extension with rotation. And away from our screens. And towards our screens and roll back down. Take your hands and your fingers and stack them underneath your forehead as we go into hover spine, okay? Fingers could also be uh, at the back of your head for this one. We've done that many times before. They could be in the goalpost position and they could be straight out to the side. All right, we're gonna choose this nice standard modification for this today. Okay, I'm resting my fingers on my forehead and now my upper back and my shoulder blades are in a relaxed, deactivated position. I've got a little bit of scapular uh, protraction to start this one. Taking my inhale breath, as I exhale, I'm going to go into scapular retraction, and then I'm gonna keep my fingers stuck to my forehead and come up into my hover spine position. Inhale, I haven't come up very far at all, and that's what we want, and then exhale to float back down. It's a, it's a lifting and lengthening rather than an extending feeling. Inhale, exhale, retract the scapula, lengthen, and come up into hover spine no more than an inch or two inches. Inhale at the top, exhale to float back down. Let's do one more just like that, inhaling, exhaling, scapular retraction, lengthen to the hover. Inhale, instead of getting higher, get longer, and then exhale, float back down. We've add, added pulses, let's do 10. Inhale, exhale, scapular retraction, lengthen and then slightly lift. Take an inhale at the top, Exhale, these should be so micro tiny. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Inhale at the top, exhale, float back down. We're gonna go into heel squeeze, guys. Laterally rotate, turn your legs out, open them about as wide as your yoga mat, right? Flex your feet and bring your heels together. Okay, important points for heel squeeze. Co-contraction, pressing the front of the pelvis down towards, so I'm talking the ASIS and the pubic bone are pressing down. Already you probably are feeling a little bit of gluteal contraction at that point, okay? Take your inhale breath. As you exhale, continue to press the front of your pelvis down through your mat. Squeeze your glutes, squeeze your heels, and lift those thighs up and away from your mat. Inhale, hold. Exhale, float down. Just one more time today, guys. Inhale. Exhale, press the front of the pelvis down, squeeze your glutes, squeeze your heels towards each other, lift your thighs, 
Inhale, hold. Exhale, release. Right into leg lift prone. So my legs are gonna stay turned out wider than my mat, but they're long and straight now, okay? Similar concepts to this exercise. Take your inhale breath. As you exhale, co-contraction, pelvis pushes down, glutes squeeze. I want you to lengthen and then lift that right leg up and away from your mat. Inhale, hold it. Exhale, float it down. Now let's go on to the left side. Inhale. Exhale, down through the front of the pelvis. Squeeze that left glute and lengthen and lift that left leg. Inhale, hold. Exhale, float back down. Let's do a couple where we do both legs, guys. Inhale, feel that co-contraction. Press the front of the pelvis down. Squeeze both glutes and lift both legs. Inhale at the top. Exhale, float back down. And just one more time, guys. Inhale, thinking about everything as you exhale. Squeeze those glutes, engage, engage. Lengthen and lift. The big toe should be pressing away from your tailbone. And then float back down. Great job, guys. Bring your legs together. Slide your hands to your shoulders. Bend your knees and walk yourselves back into shell stretch. So shell stretch, really important. I'm sitting on my heels. My belly is scooped away from my thighs. So different from child's pose, both good exercises, just different. Take an inhale breath. Exhale, it's tailbone to head. And head is last to come up. Great job, guys. So that covers the warm, the pre-warm up and the warm up portion of our Pilates class, all right? So it just gets all the body parts moving. So when you're thinking about putting together your own Pilates workout, you wanna think about covering some of those. All right, we're ready to move on. All right, everybody. The next set of exercises that we're gonna review are the 100, leg circle, and classic shoulder branch, all right? I'm, what I'm trying to do is give you guys exercises that kind of work together and form a little bit of a flow. We're going slightly outside of the classic Pilates order of exercises and going more towards the contemporary view that it's nice when exercises sort of float together. So these next three exercises go together really nicely. We're going to start with the 100, which we've done every single class since the very beginning. We know our modifications. You can keep your legs in tabletop. You can keep your legs, or sorry, in Pilates stance. You can keep your legs in tabletop. You can tabletop for inhale, extend for exhale, or you can choose to extend your legs for the entire set. The prop that we use most this semester is the flex ball, which is the prop I'm gonna to choose today. But when I do your written checklist, I will include the modifications that we've done with the flex band and the loop band as well, all right? So make your choice for today. Place the uh, flex ball right between your knees. What that does is it gets our adductor muscles firing, right? Roll into your supine position. Now let's think about what we're doing. So we're going to imprint our spines bring our legs up to tabletop if that's our choice for today and then further think about that imprint i really want you to press the abdominal wall down flat we talked about not wanting to build any sort of belly bulge into this exercise right ear, uh, ear lobes away from shoulders so we get a little bit of uh, lack of tension in the neck right arms are reaching down by our sides palms facing down we're going to start with an inhale breath as you exhale, I want you to nod your chin towards your collarbones, lower your eyes, and really peel your upper back into a high curl position this time. Get those arms pumping, nice and clean and strong and straight, and here we go. Inhaling, one, two, three, four, five, and exhale, two, three, four, ten, in, two, three, four, five, and out, two, three, four, twenty, in, two, three, four, five, and out, two, three, four, thirty, in, two, three, four, five, and out, two, three, four, forty, upper backs lifted, two, three, four, five, and out, two, three, four, fifty, strong, two, three, four, five, and out, two, three, four, five, and in, two, three, four, five, and out, two, three, four, eighty, in, two, three, four, five, and out, two, three, four, 90, in, two, three, four, five, and out, two, three, four, 100. Let's come back to tabletop and take just a couple of chest lifts. High curl, one, belly button goes down as my chest lifts towards my thighs, two, reaching my fingertips, three, hollowing out my belly, four, squeezing the ball, five, roll all the way back, take your ball and just let it go off to the side. Hug your knees.
squeeze in towards your chest. Rock the spine side to side a couple of times to feel that release. And then come back to center and we're gonna go right on to leg circle. So I want you just to lower those legs and extend them out in front of you. Long and straight, little nice point to those toes. We're gonna choose the modification, arms out to the sides, palms facing down today. We've also done palms facing up and we've done arms closer to the body, offering us more challenge, all right? So I will, again, include those modifications in your written checklist. Okay, you're going to bend your right knee and drag your right big toe up along your mat through tabletop and extend it all the way up. Taking an inhale breath, letting that leg cross the midline of the body, exhale, circle and up. Now let's talk about what's important in this exercise, core stability. That's why the leg is circling with the exhale breath. You're recruiting the transversus and pelvic floor so that the spine is not laterally flexing or rotating as you circle the leg. Let's do one more in that same direction and then go in the opposite direction. You want to be feeling right now all four corners of your back, the backs of the shoulders and the backs of the hips, securely and firmly down into your mat. Good guys, bend that right leg through tabletop, tap your mat, and slide that leg out long and straight. Bend your left knee, drag that left big toe up your mat through tabletop and extend. It's always an inhale breath to cross, exhale breath to circle it up. This one takes a lot of concentration and a lot of stability. Remember also, this one can be done with a slightly bent leg or it can be done in tabletop as well. If you're having any issues with those hip flexors, one more in that direction, and then we go in the opposite direction. Inhale now to open the leg slightly. Exhale, circle it up. And two, really use the breath, guys. And three, and four, feel that stability. And five, bend that knee through tabletop, tap your mat, and slide it out. Draw your arms now back down by your sides, palms facing down, and I want you just to walk your legs back to Pilates stance, okay? We're going into classic shoulder bridge. We have done so many shoulder bridge modifications this semester, and they're all great. They will be listed in your written check sheet. We're gonna go over the classic one today. Three kicks only to save a little bit of time. This is mostly me talking about what to think about. Okay, unlike pelvic pearl, where we articulate up into bridge, classic shoulder bridge, we keep a neutral spine and we just lift those hips up. So everybody take an inhale breath. As you exhale, transversus pelvic floor, glutes at the same time, and just pick those legs straight up. As you inhale, I want you to press down through the sole of your left foot, release the right leg through tabletop, and up. Here we go for three. Exhale, lower, inhale, lift. Torso still. Last one. Through tabletop, toe ball heel. Hips are high, ribs are calm. Down through the right, release the left. So we exhale, inhale. Really press down through the backs of the shoulders. Feel that strength through the upper back. Through tabletop, toe ball heel. Right leg once again, extend it up. Flex to lower. You're really feeling the hamstring glute on that left side, firing to keep those hips up through tabletop, toe ball heel down through the right, and we inhale to release the left. Exhaling, inhaling, exhaling, inhaling, exhaling, inhaling, exhaling, and release. Take an inhale breath at the top, guys, without articulating the spine. Just lower those hips right down. Excellent, guys. Roll towards your screens and come on up. All right, everybody. The next series of exercises that we're going to work on flow together nicely because they all involve being in a sitting position. So right now we're gonna review spine twist sitting, saw, and spine stretch forward. Three sitting exercises that actually really go nicely together. And you guys may remember I've given these 
uh, one right after the other empire classes. Okay, so spine twist sitting we do quite a bit. So we're gonna actually make this a really short set of spine twist sitting, right? Uh, you're sitting on your band, kind of right in the middle of it. Remember, we have two leg choices for this one, and your leg choice is going to depend on your ability to sit comfortably up on your sits bones with a neutral spine. So you guys have noticed, I go back and forth with this one. If I'm having hip flexor or kind of a day where I don't feel like I can really make effective use by using this version, I'll go ahead and fold my legs in. Today I'm going to extend them out just to talk a little bit about that position. My legs are long and straight and they're just slightly wider than my shoulders. We're gonna flex our feet and pull our toes actually almost back towards us because I love when people activate their tibialis muscles during this exercise. You just get more bang for your buck. Whatever your choice is, make sure you can get on those sits bones and that you really truly have a lengthened neutral spine. Okay, so I want you to draw up on one side of your flex band. Let's just reach with our right arm because that just makes sense. Draw it across, across the center. Take your left hand and stack it underneath. Now the next thing you're thinking about is your upper body positioning, right? Dancers, really what you want to be thinking of is your first position arms, right? If you're not a dancer, no worries. This is still a fabulous exercise. You're thinking shoulder to elbow to wrist to fist in a very slight downward slope, right? And you're really thinking about activating the muscles of the armpit, keeping the collarbones wide, just a little bit of scapular retraction for this one. We start with an inhale breath. As we exhale, we rotate the rib cage on the pelvis three times. One, a little bit further. Two, a little bit further. Three, and then we're gonna inhale to return. One, two, three, and return. Yes, the pelvis and the hips can move. Two, three, there's this sense of spiraling upward as you rotate. Two, three, return. I'm keeping my fists very centered with my sternum, right? So remember, it's not about pulling the arms, it's about rotating the entire upper body in one piece. And we're only gonna do two more today. Like I said, short set. I'm just going over what's important. And one more and return. Let's release the right side of our band. Draw up on the left side. Center it right down the center of your sternum. Place your opposite hand underneath. Make sure one thing that happens with this exercise is people start to pull the fists in towards the chest. You're really not activating the shoulder girdle muscles or upper back muscles when you do that. Create kind of a circle, create that loop. Take your inhale to prepare. Exhale, one, the crown of my head grows taller, two, three, and I spiral back to return, one, two, three. We're really activating those obliques as well as the muscles of the shoulder girdle and upper back. Good, and again, reach, two, three, and return. Think about your eyes focusing, eyes focusing, eyes focusing, and return. We'll take one more set, one, two, three, and return. Let's release the left side of the band. You can just continue to sit on your band for saw, which is good news. Let's stretch our arms out to the side. My arms are just ever so slightly, so slightly lower than my shoulders. Fingertips reaching and my palms are facing forward. We're gonna take an inhale breath, and as we inhale, let's rotate over to the right. Now I'm going to reach, it's like my pinky finger is slicing the edge of my pinky toe, and I'm turning my back hand, my palm is facing behind me. And then back up as we inhale, rotate, exhale. Inhale to rotate, exhale. Inhale to rotate, great for the obliques, guys, and such an amazing stretch for soft. Inhaling, Exhaling, inhaling, exhaling, inhaling, exhaling. One more, guys. Inhaling and exhaling. Let's come back to center, guys, and go into spine stretch forward, okay? Um, legs for this one, and I should have mentioned that for uh, saw as well. 
If you're having tightness in the hamstrings, you can ever so slightly bend those knees. You're still getting a nice stretch through the spine. Same thing for spine stretch forward. All right, my hands are right in the middle in my leg position. I'm gonna take an inhale breath to prepare. As I exhale, I'm going to nod my chin, articulate my spine, and slide my fingertips. Try to think about reaching beyond your heels. And then I'm gonna inhale and try to reach just a little bit more. And then I'm gonna exhale, roll and stack my spine up that imaginary wall, crown of the head last. Inhaling, exhaling to nod the chin, articulate the spine down and reach. Inhale, let's try to reach just a little further. I'm really feeling the spine stretch for this today. It feels so good. And then exhale, roll and stack. In fact, I was only gonna do two, but let's do four. Inhale, exhale, nod the chin, roll it out, slide those fingers right out past your heels. Inhale, so you can get a little more stretch. Exhale, roll back up. Inhale, exhale, roll it down, slide those fingers. Inhale, see if you can slide them just a little more. And exhale, roll and stack. Good, guys, that was great. We'll go on to our next series. All right, everybody. Our next series of exercises is kind of a monster because there are so many of them great ones that we've done uh, this past semester. So we are really, truly only going to do just a very few reps of each one, more of a, as a reminder of what we've done this semester. And this is our side lying series, all right? So side lying series, let's start with our heads this way, toes pointed that way. One of the very important things to think about for side lying series is keeping a neutral spine, all right? from the back of the skull through the cervical spine, thoracic spine, lumbar spine, sacrum, tailbone, very important. No curling that tailbone under. It releases straight out. Same with the sit spouts, all right? So we've talked about options for that bottom arm. It can either be lengthened and extended with the head resting, or what I like to do, and several of you I know watching in class like to do, is bend that elbow. It just brings the head up just a tiny bit higher. All right, top hand. Right, right in front of the rib cage, right? Like you're making a handprint and that gives us a little bit more stability, except in the few exercises where we bring it to the top of the hip, all right? We're gonna start off with some of the straight leg series that we've talked about. So then we wanna make sure that we're, our top hip is stacked directly over the bottom hip and the top leg is stacked directly over. Now that can, as we know, that can be harder to achieve, right? It sounds so simple to say, harder to achieve, right? So I'm in one pin straight line, like I have a maypole going through the crown of my head all the way down through the tips of my toes, okay? So these uh, sideline exercises with straight legs all have different names. I'm gonna try to give them very simple names today, all right? We're gonna start with pointed toes. You're gonna take an inhale breath, and we're gonna call this top leg lifting, all right? So my top leg is lifting with a pointed toe, flexing and then lowering with a flexed foot. Articulate back to a pointed toe, lift and lower. So some of the important things to think about in this exercise are transversus, abdominis, pelvic floor engagement, right? Because you really want to isolate that top leg as you lift and lower it, right? Lifting and lowering. Another important thing to think about during this exercise is really maintain parallel legs. There's no lateral rotation in this exercise at all. We're really trying to isolate gluteus medius, gluteus minimus. And in order to do that, those are our internal rotators. We really need to stay parallel. Okay, let's do just a couple more. Good, and now we're gonna lift and hold. And we're gonna use a flexed foot today, but you can use a pointed foot. We're going into leg circle, okay? So these are the little circles that we take right? Keeping the spine neutral and very hard. Try not to let the torso move as the leg circles. Good. Just a couple more. Good. Now let's do a few circling forward. Let's do five of them. And three. And four. And five. Good. Point your top foot. This one is sometimes called staggered leg. So in this one, I keep my top leg lifted. I bring my bottom leg up to meet it 
and then I lower them both down. We did these more towards the beginning of the semester, connect and lower them both together. Lift, connect, again, we'll call this one staggered leg. Lift, connect and lower. Lift, connect and lower and lift, connect, and lower. Lift the top leg. We're gonna call this next one bottom leg. All right, so we have top leg, now we have bottom leg. Bottom leg lift and lower. Two and lower. Three and lower. Four and lower. One more, five and lower. Bring both legs together. We're gonna to call this next one both legs. Take an inhale breath. As you exhale, lengthen the big toes away from the crown of the head and lift both legs. And lower. And two. And lower. Good guys, three. And let's take four. And let's take five. Okay guys, we haven't done this next one in a long time. Extend your top arm palm facing down. Bring your, sorry, your bottom arm, palm facing down. Top arm right to the side of the hip. We're gonna go into lateral flexion. This one takes a lot of work. We're only gonna do a couple of these. Take an inhale breath. As you exhale, we're lifting the legs and the torso and then lowering back down. And again, exhale and inhaling. All right, so that's lateral flexion. All right, bend your top elbow, if your bottom elbow if you'd like to, and now bring your knees forward, okay? And we're gonna go into clam or clamshells. Just a few, this is just a reminder of what this is important in this exercise. Okay, I brought my knees forward. My big toes are lined up right underneath my sits bone tailbone, but I haven't curled my pelvis under. And that's what people can kind of curl up into a fetal position in this exercise. You don't want to do that. Release the tailbone, release the sits bones. Spine is neutral. Use the back of your mat as a guide if you need to. Take an inhale breath. Exhale, right? We're externally rotating that top leg and then squeezing the inner thighs together. We've talked a lot about concentric and eccentric control in this exercise. If people aren't careful, they kind of let the leg drop, right? They're losing that eccentric control of this exercise, okay? So we've done them just like that. We've also done them with the shins lifted, right? Let's do a couple of those just to remind us of that series, okay? And then we've also done them where we brought the knees together, kind of forming an X shape to my legs and then coming into the diamond. All right, we've done those. Yep. And we've even done those with the shins lifted. So we've created the X and the diamond, right? Nice challenging one, okay? And we've even slid our knees back to create a more straight line across the front of the body. And we've come up to our side plank position, lifting the hip, and we've done the one where we lift the top thigh, flex and kick forward, come back and squeeze, lift, kick forward, come back and squeeze, lift, kick forward, come back and squeeze. Remember, anytime we're doing side plank, we're creating space between the head of the humerus and the shoulder girdle, and we're keeping the head in line with the rest of the spine, okay? So, just a quick review of what we just did for our sideline series. We did some top leg, right? We did some leg circles. They can be done flexed or pointed. We did the one we called staggered leg. Lift, connect the top leg and lower them both. Okay? We did the one we're calling bottom leg. Bottom leg, just lifting and lowering. We did both legs and we did lateral flexion, which is the one where the legs come up together and the upper body comes up. Then we went through some of our clamshell series. Okay, so two more sideline exercises that we did this semester. One is side lying kick. We learned that one probably, I wanna say, just about three weeks ago. So let's review that one quickly, and then we're gonna finish off with side bend. Okay, so side lying kick. Really important, I love using my mat for this one. I line my spine up from the back of my head all the way through my tailbone. 
with the back, right? And then I send my legs. Now this, you wanna kinda of almost stick your butt out. My legs are piked forward in front of my mat. My head is resting on the palm of my hand, right? And my top hand is right on top, okay? So I'm starting in that position. I'm lifting my top leg, just hip height. I'm going to flex my top foot and inhale as I kick forward two times. Inhale, inhale, point my foot, exhale, push into my elbow, lift my side rib cage, my side body away from my mat as I press back. Inhale, inhale, exhale. My weight is resting on my hip, on my elbow, and my side rib cage is lifted. Inhale, inhale. As I take my leg to the back, I'm not going into spinal extension. I'm squeezing my glute and making that reach to the back happen from my hip joint. One, good. Inhale, inhale, and exhale to reach back. Great heart exercise, guys. Okay, let's review side bend. Okay, so side bend. My top foot, right, is on top. <laughs> my bottom foot is behind, right? My heel is in front of my ankle, and I've created a straight line between my ankle heel position of my feet, my hip, and the heel of my hand. They're forming kind of a straight line, straight across, okay? I'm resting my top hand right on top of my knee with my palm facing up. And here's where we really get to the meat of this exercise. Lots of us have those hyperextended elbows. Make sure if you do, there's a slight break in your elbow and everybody make sure that you're not sinking into the shoulder girdle, that you've created that sense of space and you're actually pushing up and away from the head of the humerus, okay? This is one of those exercises, there's a couple of them, that involves a two breath preparation. So you're always gonna take an inhale breath, a deep stabilizing exhale breath, and then on the next inhale breath, pressing into the heel of the hand, scooping those hips up, connecting the inner thighs, and then pressing back down. And we inhale and exhale. Just two more. Inhale and exhale. And one more. Inhale and exhale. So we're gonna swing our feet are all over to this side, heads pointing in this direction, and truly just a few of each on this side, guys. I don't want anyone to be lopsided for the rest of the day, but for the sake of time. Okay, so in our beautiful side line position, everything we talked about for the first side, okay, we're gonna go into top leg. So I'm inhaling and lengthening and lifting that top leg, exhaling to flex and lower. I'm thinking about stabilizing through the core, through the torso, so that the only thing mobilizing right now is my leg in the hip socket. Let's take two more. And let's take one more. With a flexed foot today, leg circle. One, two, a little harder to stabilize this time. Three, four, five. Coming forward for five, four, Three, two, one. Point that top toe going into staggered leg. Lift and connect, both lower. Lift, bottom leg connects and lower. Lift, bottom leg connects and lower. Lift, bottom leg connects and lower. Into bottom leg, top leg lifts and stays. Bottom leg lifts and lowers. And two, and three, and four, and five. Let's bring both legs down and go into both legs. Inhale, breath. Exhale, lengthen both legs and lift them. Inhale, lower them. And lower. So we're starting to get those obliques involved three, and lower, and four, and lower. Let's do one more, five, and lower. Extend the top arm, or so the, why do we keep doing that? The bottom arm, if you chose to fold it in, take the top arm, place it right by your side, going into lateral flexion. Inhale breath, strong exhale breath. 
Inhale, breath. Strong exhale, breath. One more. Inhale, breath. And strong exhale, breath. And come through. Folding into clam shells. Bring those knees forward. Make sure that you're absolutely stacked, right? Take that moment always to do that so you're doing it correctly. Big toes touching. Inhale, exhale to lift that top knee. And two. Always the option for clam shells or clam to bring the top hand to the top of the pelvis anytime you feel like you need to, just to make sure that the pelvis is not moving, that it's absolutely stable. Good. Let's do a few where we lift our shins and we lift and lower and two and three and four and five bring the shins down create almost an x shape and then bring your big toes together so it's knees together toes together a little bit of internal rotation external rotation and two more and one more bring your thighs together lift your shins let's keep going with that series just a couple Good. that really gets the internal rotators working but make sure you're not starting to tuck the pelvis and let's take one more bring the thighs together lower your shins scoot your knees back so you're in a straighter line through the front side of the body come up to your elbow right create that space top hand to the top of the pelvis pick up the hips so you're in a side elbow plank position and let's lift that top thigh flex your foot as you kick forward and together make sure the head is in line with the rest of the spine so you have that nice straight line through the cervical spine and we'll take two more good and one more good guys come all the way back down and let's go into side line hit so scoot yourself back on your mats a little bit line your spine up with the back of your mat take your legs forward okay just about a 45 degree angle from standing position right my hand is supporting my head opposite hand right on top already feeling that sense of strength here we go lift that top leg no higher than hip height it's not going to do you any good to go any higher than hip height we go inhale inhale exhale to lift the side body and inhale inhale exhale obliques firing there inhale inhale glute firing and inhale inhale exhale and last one inhale inhale exhale good come forward stack those legs come on up and we're going to side bend for our final side lying exercise all right top foot over bottom foot under straight line between my ankle heel my hip and the heel of my hand slight bend in my elbow lots of work through the shoulder girdle all right here we go two breath preparation for this one breathing in deeply breathing out deeply stabilizing and then inhaling to come up big arc big reach of those fingertips and release and two squeeze the inner thighs here close those inner thighs and release and three and release and four and release good guys I know we've done more modifications for a lot of those exercises. They will be included in your written uh, review. All right. All right, everybody. Believe it or not, we are making great progress. So the next section of exercises that we're going to go on to are going to move relatively quickly because we do them quite a bit. We're going to take rolling like a ball, right? And take it directly into our big five series. Rolling like a ball is not part of the Big Five series, but it's a really nice kind of intro or segue into the Big Five series, and they're very often done in that order, all right? So one modification that we've done quite frequently, especially when we were back in the studio for rolling like a ball is we added those little, what I call punches. And what that does is it gives those obliques that extra 
workout by adding a little bit of spinal rotation. So here's the order of our sequence today. We're going to take two sets of rolling like a ball with rotation. So that'll be roll, come back, roll, come back, punch, two, three, hold on, roll, come back, roll, come back, opposite side, punch, two, three, and hold on. Then we'll take that directly into single leg stretch for a set of 10. Then we're gonna go into double leg stretch for a set of five. Then we're going to go into crisscross, and we've just talked through all the technical issues for all these crisscross for a set of 10. Then I'm going to go into a set of scissors, also can be known as single straight leg stretch. We're gonna call them scissors, that's just too much of a mouthful. Scissors for a set of 10, and we're not gonna use the ball today for those. That will be added to your um, written list. And then we're gonna go into a set of lower and lift, all right? So rolling like a ball into the big five series. Let's get started and review what's important in this series. Okay, so rolling like the ball. I am going to now place my weight behind my sits bones. Finally, an exercise where we're not starting right up on those sits bones. I have one hand to the back of each thigh. A more advanced modification, if you feel ready, is to bring your hands to the outsides of your shins. Some of you may be ready to do that. Your legs can be anywhere from tabletop to a little bit lower than tabletop, whatever works better. The most important part of this exercise is really spinning the pelvis back and creating as much of a posterior pelvic tilt and therefore lumbar flexion as you possibly can so that the rolling is nice and even without any kathunking. When we do our rotation, for the first set, let's punch with our left fist and take our rotation to the right. And when we do our second set, right, we'll start with the right fist and take our rotation to the left, okay? Here we go, let's get behind those sits bones. Press your belly button back deeply. Get ready to spin your pelvis back. This is another two breath preparation. Let's all inhale, exhale deeply for stability. And on that next inhale breath, we tuck and roll one and come up and balance. And two, up and balance. Punch with your left fist. One, two, three, and hold on. And roll and balance. Nice, smooth roll and bounce. Punch with your right fist. One, two, three, and hold back on into single leg stretch. Let's, let's all extend our left leg. Draw your right knee towards you. Outside hand to the outside of your ankle. Inside hand to the inside of your knee. And switch. And four. And switch. Upper back's lifted. Five switch and six, switch and seven, switch and eight, switch and nine, switch and 10, switch directly into double leg stretch. Bend both knees to tabletop and reach for your ankle bones. Slide your hands up the outsides of your shins and then extend your arms, extend your legs and try to create a V position and then circle and come back. And two, Exhaling, three, returning, returning, returning into crisscross. Let's bring our left armpit towards the inside of our right knee and cross, two, and cross, cross, and four, cross, and five, cross, and six, cross, and seven, and eight, and nine, make sure it's armpits, not elbows, 10. Good, guys, hold on to the backs of your thighs. Kind of pull yourselves up a little bit higher, drop your belly button a little bit lower, and extend your legs straight up towards the ceiling. Let's all release the left leg, draw the right leg towards you, and a little double pulse. One, two, meet in the middle and switch. One, two, little double exhales. And, and six, and switch, and seven, and switch, and eight, and switch, and nine, and switch, 
and 10, and switch. Good, guys, bring your legs straight back up towards the ceiling. Let's start with pointed toes. Bring your fingertips to the back of your head now. Exhale, flex your feet and lower. Inhale, lift and point. Make sure you're staying in imprint, guys. Belly buttons down. If that means your heels can't go down as much, that's fine. Let's take three more. Keep those shoulders high. Two more. Upper back's lifted. And one more. Excellent, guys. Hold on behind those thighs. Draw yourselves up. Melt down. Let's hug our knees in towards our torsos. And just rock side to side a couple times. Ooh, good work, guys. Roll towards your screens and come back up. You really can't beat that big five series. It's such a good one. Okay, guys, our next three exercises involve bridging. We're going to do leg pull front, leg pull back, and cat stretch. All right, leg pull front to start. We learned this one, I want to say, about three weeks ago, okay? So we're on a kind of front-lying bridge position. We're going to do elbow plank today. Your fingers can be interlaced or your hands can be clasped. Make sure, a couple of reminders for plank position. Always that slight bit of scapular protraction so that we don't start to sink into the shoulder girdle. We're activating a muscle back there called the serratus anterior that lies between the back of the rib cage and our scapula. Okay? Heavy, heavy work through those abdominals. We're going to be pulling those abdominals up. Heavy work through the glutes and hamstrings. All right? Here we go. Into leg pull front. Okay? So get into your elbow plank position. And the first thing you want to do is really create that clean, straight line through the crown of the head all the way through the heel. So my abdominals are lifting, my glutes are squeezing. Okay? We're going to all lift up, lift our right heel up towards the ceiling with a flexed foot. We're going to hinge back and point that right toe. Hinge forward, flex the foot, and the ball of the foot comes to the floor. Right? Lift the left heel, flexed. Point as you hinge back. Flex as you hinge forward. Follow the foot to your mat. Let's inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale. Exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, last one, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. Just come to your knees, come through a little bit of a shell stretch, and roll up, and let's go immediately into leg pull back. And a lot of you commented, we did this one about two weeks ago, and a lot of you commented and this one was incredibly difficult. Don't worry, you're not crazy, it is. Okay, my legs are extended out in front, parallel, toes pointed, legs lengthened, right? I'm behind my sits bones for this one. My arms are extended behind me. Your fingertips can be pointing straight back or they can be angled slightly. There is a lot of upper back activity to start this one, a lot of abdominals, and of course, a lot of glutes and hamstrings. We're gonna take an inhale breath to prepare. As we exhale, we're gonna squeeze our glutes and to activate the transversus abdominis pelvic floor. Okay, take another inhale of breath at the top, and we exhale to lift, inhale to lower. And two, and three, and four. Just one more rep today, each side, and five, and six. Go ahead and inhale, exhale to lower those hips down, Give yourselves a little shoulder roll, and because we've been on our wrists, give yourselves a little bit of a wrist roll. We're going to go right into cat stretch and talk about some of the quadruped modifications that we've done this semester. So into cat stretch. Cat stretch starts in a quadruped position. My knees are directly underneath my hip joint. The heels of my hands are underneath my shoulder joint. And as always, there's a slight break in my elbows a little bit of scapular protraction so I don't sink down. Abdominals are lifted. We start with an inhale breath. As we exhale, pull the belly button up through the spine and go into complete spinal flexion, dropping the tailbone, the sits bones, and the crown of the head. Inhale, come back to neutral. Exhale, go into complete spinal extension, lifting the tailbone, the sits bones, and the crown of the head. And then inhale back to neutral. Take it again each side. 
exhaling, inhaling. Exhaling, make sure not too much cervical extension. We talk about that a lot. And inhaling. Now we're gonna take it a little more continuously. So we're gonna exhale into flexion, as we often do, and we're going to inhale into extension. So we're gonna continuously go from exhale, flexion, inhale, extension. A couple more, exhaling, and inhaling, and exhaling, and inhaling. Let's all return to neutral. And let's go into a little bit of some of the modifications of, for quadruped we've done. We've gone into bird dog. Inhale, exhale, extending the right arm from the left leg, just a nice straight plane right across fingers to toes, and inhale to come back. Exhale, opposite side. Such a great stability exercise, guys. Subtle, simple, so effective. Reaching and in, exhaling to reach, inhaling to come in. Let's do one more rep each side, just to kind of walk this one in our bodies. And again, good. We've also done a little bit of glute work in quadruped, okay? Take an inhale breath. As you exhale, let's start with the right leg. You're just gonna lift up, keep the 90 degree bend to that right leg and extend that leg right out to the side, like a little donkey kick and then come back, and then opposite side, two. You're trying not to change the back of the pelvis. Three, and four. Belly button still lifting, and five, and last one, six. We've also done one where we've kept that 90 degree angle to the knee, lift the sole of the foot up, we've done little squeezes. Try not to change the spine, all right? Just feel that glute activate. You could do that with a straight back leg as well. A little bit lengthen the lever so you get a little bit more weight there. Good, we'll try it with the other side. 90 degree bend, little heel squeezes towards the ceiling. Good, extend the leg and once again just pulse that heel up. Try not to change the back and you start to really feel it in the glutes. Good, and just come back in. Let's go into a shell stretch, take an inhale breath. Exhale, roll and stack. Guys, we have two more sections to go and that is it, we're so close. All right, our next set series is our half rollback, obliques rollback, can-can, we don't wanna forget can-can, a lot of us like that one, and roll-up series. So just a very few reps of each today, guys. We're gonna start with half rollback, and because our flex ball has, such, has been such an integral part of this series uh, in the past, we're gonna go ahead and use the flex ball for this one, okay? So half rollback, I'm gonna keep it short. We're gonna do a set of three very simple ones just to establish that rocking motion, right, on and off the sits bones. And then we're gonna do a set of two with our wonderful arm option. Right? Then we're going to go directly into obliques rollback, directly into can-can, and directly into roll-up. Okay, so for half rollback, I'm in my Pilates stance. My weight is directly on top of my sits bones. I'm holding my flex ball with the palms of my hands, fingers wrapping over the ball. My spine is in a beautiful C curve. My shoulders are pulled down and away from my earlobes. I'm starting with an inhale breath. As I exhale, I'm not thinking about sending my spine back. I'm thinking about spinning my pelvis back. And then inhale, out back to my start position. And two, and up and over. And three, up and over. Let's do one more just like that, guys. And four, up and over. Now we'll add our arm options for two beautiful sets. So we're gonna roll back. Lift the arms, lower the arms. Circle the right arm and come back. Circle the left arm and come back. And then we'll do a lift and lower. Then we're gonna rotate to the right and come back. Rotate to the left and come back. Do one more lift and lower and then over. Nice deep roll back. Two arms lifting and lowering. Circle the left arm and catch. Circle the right arm and catch another lift and lower. Let's rotate to the left and let's rotate to the right. Do another lift and lower and over. 
Guys, that was beautiful. Stack your spines into a neutral and let's go into obliques roll back. Start with an inhale breath. As you exhale, spin the pelvis back, grab the ball with your right hand, rotate to the right, reaching that ball behind you, come back and then stack your spine back to neutral. Start to roll directly back, grab the ball with your left hand, rotate to the left, back to center, roll and stack up to neutral. So we're always restacking back to neutral between each roll back and roll back, rotate, back to center and up. One more in each direction. And last one. Take your ball, put it off to the side where you can grab it easily, guys. Let's go back, right? We're off our sit bones once again, and I'm pulling my toes right in towards my sit bone. My knees are actually connected for can can. Okay? We're gonna take three little rotations of our waist. So let's take the knees over to the left. One, I'm on my left sit bone and then to the right, I'm on my right sit bone, and then to the left, I'm on my left sit bone. From here, I extend both legs and then bring them back in, and I rock, and two, and three, extend, and in. One, two, three, extend, and in. This will be our last one, guys. One, two, three, extend, and in. Come all the way up, guys. Grab your flex ball again. Grab into the palms of your hands. Wrap your fingers around. Get tall on your sit bones. Take your inhale breath. As you exhale, spin that pelvis back. See if you can roll a little bit more slowly than we did earlier. One vertebrae at a time. Super smooth. Extend the arms up over your head, but don't forget about your rib cage stabilization. Here we go. Roll up. Inhale, ball to the ceiling. Exhale, nod your chin, scoop up and over. Remember, we're not reaching belly button down to our thigh. We're coming up and over, like you're reaching over a giant beach ball that's on your thighs. Inhale, start to spin the pelvis back, and then exhale, articulate the spine back down. Inhale, and exhale. Inhale, and exhale. Two more, everybody. Inhale and exhale. Inhale and exhale as smooth as you can. Inhale and exhale. Inhaling and exhaling. I love that series of exercises. I hope you guys enjoy it too. It makes my spine feel so good. My core feels so strong. One more series, guys, and this is our final back extension series, all right? So we've got two exercises that we've done many times before, and we've got one last, one final new exercise to give you guys today, okay? So we're gonna start with swimming, right? Great posterior chain exercise. Gets all the muscles all the way from the cervical spine, all the way through the calf muscles, right? Then we're gonna go into breaststroke, and then our final new exercise that I'm gonna take you through today, guys, is called Swan Dive, okay? Let's start with the one we know the best, swimming. We've done this one probably more than any other back extension exercise other than the warm up, okay? So I'm in my prone position. My legs are extended behind me, long and straight. My arms are extended out in front of me. Remember, important to this exercise, even though I'm really reaching my fingertips forward, I'm pulling my shoulders down and back. You don't want to have your shoulders attached to your earlobes for this exercise. I'm definitely using my co-contraction, right? and there's definitely activity in my glutes and hamstrings. We start with our forehead on our mats, right? Taking an inhale breath. As you exhale, you want to lengthen and then lift the upper body and the legs, not too much extension behind the neck as we know. Then you're just gonna breathe naturally and normally as you switch the arms and legs. The arms and legs stay nice and lengthened and extended. A little bit of points to those toes. All right, we're just gonna take a few more counts today. And then we finish this one by coming back to our torpedo position and floating down. 
Let's all slide our hands to our shoulders. Press back into shell stretch. Give ourselves a quick inhale breath to stretch out those spinal muscles. Exhale to roll and stack and immediately into breath stroke. So I'm gonna come forward back into my prone position. This time, I'm going to open my legs and laterally rotate them. So they're just a little bit wider than my mat and they're laterally rotated or turned out. Definitely feeling my co-contraction for this one. My arms are in the goalpost position. This is the one that uses hover spine and back extension. So it's kind of like a continuation of our warm-up. Take an inhale breath. As you exhale, really feel your co-contraction. Lengthen your arms and come to a hover spine position. You're going to inhale, circle those arms wide away from the center of your body and come up into extension. And once again, exhale, bend your elbows, thread them through and extend them forward. Inhale, circle them wide and then back by your hips to come up. So it's an exhale and an inhale. Two more. Exhale and inhale. One more. Exhale and inhale. Let's flip down to our goal post position, guys. Bring your legs together, slide your hand. I know, a lot of shell stretch. It's important to stretch those spinal muscles out after we work them. Inhale, exhale to roll up. Okay, guys, last new exercise of the semester, swan dive. Let me talk quickly about this one. It is considered uh, an advanced exercise in a lot of Pilates methods. Uh, it's not for everyone, so it might be one of those exercises that you try once, and if you decide this is not for me, will you just you watch and, and learn the exercise so you know it, but don't feel like you have to keep repeating it, okay? So, one of the important extra things about this exercise is it involves the heaviest use of your co-contraction of any other spinal exercise that we do. So we talk about co-contraction the minute we start getting into a prone position. And it starts to kind of almost build that need for the co-contraction right up through the exercises. This one uses it the most. Okay, so we're in a prone position. Like I said, your legs are wider than your mat, right? We just, the same legs that we just used for breast stroke, okay? My hands start right by my shoulders. And then the starting position for this one is I actually pull myself up. I pull myself so far up, right, that my pubic bone, it, my ASIS definitely, and my pubic bone are starting to pull up away. So I've got so much pull up through my belly button muscles, right, that they start to lift up, okay? We're gonna do a two breath preparation for this one, an inhale and an exhale. On the next inhale breath, I want you to imagine that this line is like a wooden leg of a rocking chair. As you rock forward, this curve, this position that you're in, this shape, is not going to change, all right? So, we inhale, we exhale. We inhale, really hold on to that co-contraction. We dive forward and come up and catch. So you see that I'm trying to really maintain the position that I'm in right now is not gonna change as I rock forward. And inhale. Exhale to come up and catch, all right? Try a couple with me. Let's do three. Get yourself into this position. Pull up on your abdominals. Press your shoulders down. Create the space in the shoulder girdle. Two breaths with me. Inhale. Deep strengthening exhale. Inhale, rock. Exhale, come up and catch. And two. And last one, three. Hard to stay even. Lower yourselves got down, guys. Bring your legs together. You can see why it's not for everybody, right? It's, but it's an interesting one. If it is right for you, a lot of people love it. Okay, let's fold ourselves back into shell stretch. Take an inhale breath. We're gonna take two breaths this time. We really need it. We really work those spinal extensors. And then exhale. Inhale once again. And then exhale, roll and stack your spines. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for your patience with all of that. That was a lot of material, but you will be able to refer back to this video. This is probably one that I'm not gonna post on YouTube. I'm just gonna make sure that you guys have the link to this for your future reference. 
uh, to be able to go back at any time and review your favorite exercises. And we're gonna be using this one just a little bit on the final as well. Okay, you guys, take care, and I will see you later in the